What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Dragonflight video. I hope you are all doing very well. I am super excited to start out a new series with you guys on Enhancement Shaman. I'm going to be talking about four different builds that I believe are completely viable right now for Enhancement Shaman and are really fun to play. And I want to do a build comparison. So this is going to kind of look like a tier list, but I promise you it's not going to be uh, exactly like a tier list. And I'm going to go over um, a couple things right now. This video right now is just the introduction to the whole series. Because if I was going to try and jam all four of the builds and their descriptions and all the gameplay stuff like into one video, it would be like 40 or 5, 50 minutes long. And we're not going to do that. So instead, I'm going to talk about each build individually. And I'm also going to talk about um, the concept behind all of this and my criteria what i'm measuring what are the um different things that are important to understand about each build and it's not just about which one does the most damage there are there's other criteria i'm going to introduce you to that in a minute so let's start out by introducing you to the different builds themselves okay there are four different builds we're going to compare them on their merits in the other videos let's introduce them right now the first one's going to be of course the storm build this is the one that has probably risen in the highest popularity uh, most recently this is my version of it this is what i've run in a bunch of different keys and i've done quite a bit of damage on this build um, i've done a bunch of 20s now just so you guys can see uh, recently i've been picking up my rating and i finally got to do some keys with the boys and we've been getting some 20s done which is really good i'm almost all the way there on all my different keys but the first build is going to be the storm build and it focuses primarily on storm strike resetting storm strike with legacy of the frost switch down here proccing deeply rooted elements to get those big juicy chain lightnings and lightning bolts coming out when you're pressing your wind strike and your main cooldown is going to be doom winds okay you're going to combo that with sundering that's the main focus of this build. Physical damage and nature damage through your lightning bolt and chain lightnings. Okay, so that's the storm build. Let's move on to the fire blaster build. This is what I've kind of affectionately named uh, this build. This build focuses purely on fire damage. So this has got your fire nova up here instead of the hailstorm stuff. You go all the way down the fire side of the tree and then you flip over and you're going all the way down the primordial wave side of the tree you also have elemental blast for improved single target damage because you're losing some of that hailstorm frost shock damage for single target so the alley blast really helps with that regard you have no physical stuff whatsoever no doom winds no storm flurry um, none of that stuff okay so instead this build focuses primarily on your aoe damage coming from uh fire nova and then your big primordial wave windows spreading out your flame shocks to get the big lightning bolt cleave, getting a huge haste window, and then hoping that you get the uh, fire dogs from your elemental spirits. That's how this build kind of functions. Lots and lots of really solid AoE damage coming out of this build, okay? That's the Fire Blaster build. Now, let's move on to the Elementalist build. This is a very slight variation on the Fire Blaster build. You can see there's not very many talents that actually change here. This is, of course, the most popular build uh, right now, and uh, it focuses on frost shock damage you have ice strike buffing up your frost shock and hailstorm making your frost shock cleave to a bunch of different enemies that's a lot of your aoe damage and it also helps with single target damage quite a bit you still have your big primordial wave window right here and you've got the uh, elemental spirits this build uh, uh utilizes elemental spirits the best out of any of the builds because you're dealing fire damage nature damage and frost damage no matter which wolf you get you're going to be getting lots of damage out of that so that's the elementalist build let's move on to the last build here which i'm affectionately naming the flame strike build this is a build that focuses on physical and fire damage so it's not a pure fire damage it's not a pure physical damage it's a bit of both so you've got your lava lash and you can spread it with Molten Assault. But you now have Wind Fury, Totem, Storm Flurry. And you're going all the way down and getting Deeply Rooted. You only uh, get one point in Witch Doctor's Ancestry. And then you have a Primordial Wave window. And you have a Doom Winds cooldown as well. So it's kind of mixing and matching a lot of stuff. But this build actually works. And again, I've tried all of these builds in a plus 19 key or higher. I will get to all of those in, diff in the different videos. But just know... That these last bunch of keys that I've done here, these all are uh, the builds that I just tried running. And I've run these builds in other keys, but I wanted to make sure I tried them at a 19 level or higher to see how they did. But that is the Flame Strike build. It basically focuses on 
uh, all the different cooldowns that you have. You have a Doom Winds plus Sundering Window. In your Sundering Window, you also want to get your Primordia Wave stuff going. And then you're trying to accelerate your attack speed is so quickly that you can just press storm strike back to back to back to back to trigger deeply rooted that's the idea of this build okay those are the four different builds that i'm going to be looking at in the upcoming videos they're each going to get their own video and we're going to discuss the criteria for how to measure the performance of these builds and here is the criteria right here we're going to jump into it right here oh i'll just back up a little bit so Here's what we're looking at. <clears throat> this is what I'm going to use to measure the the different builds, and I'm going to I'm going to talk about these criteria in particular. So the first one's going to be raw damage. How much damage does the build do? And it's going to get a rating um, based on that. And there's going to be obviously a first place and a last place based on which build that I've tested that I feel like does the most damage. Just pure numbers. Okay. Number two is going to be the execution and the difficulty of the build or the simplicity of the build how easy is it to execute the build do i have to press you know is is, it, is pressing fire nova kind of hard is doing my primordial wave window is that sometimes difficult to pull off versus not doing it is it difficult to track legacy of the frost witch versus not tracking it which buffs am i working with which ones are harder to execute than the other ones we're going to look at every build and see how simple it is and how easy it is to execute this also is going to bleed a little bit into how easy is it to use my utility so the easier a build is to execute the easier it's going to be for you to pay attention to the dungeon that you're in and the uh, mobs that might need to be kicked and the uh, crowd control that you can put down your cap totem you could hex potentially depending on what week it is in mythic plus there's lots of other uh, ways that you can contribute to a key so this is a really important category and i want to make sure that we spend some time there as for sure the next one's going to be maelstrom weapon stack generation this is our primary resource of course how easy is it for the build to generate maelstrom weapon stacks and to spend them how easy is it to get into that that cycle of building and spending are there are there any moments during your build where you kind of have you're kind of stuck in like a drought where nothing's happening. There's like two or three seconds that goes by where like literally nothing's happening because it doesn't generate enough Maelstrom weapon stacks or you or it's really difficult to generate Maelstrom weapon stacks. And so if you're not executing it perfectly, you're going to find you're, you have those moments where nothing's happening. Tier set bonus interaction. This is also really important. As, as you guys probably know at this point, we have a tier set bonus that focuses on, uh, on Sundering. Oops, sorry. And... Um, it gives you this buff, it increases your mastery by 24%, and then it also increases your physical and fire damage, and then also buffs your next two chain lightnings by 100%. This is a really important idea to think about when it comes to the tier set bonus and how it interacts with each different build, because there's some builds that have other cooldowns like Primordial Wave, which want you to press lightning bolt, not chain lightning. So when you start a fight, you get your Primordial Wave out there and it generates maelstrom weapon stacks for you then you need to press lightning bolt but then you press sundering and now you need to press chain lightning so you have to build up those maelstrom weapon stacks again sometimes both of those things can be happening at the same time and it can create a little bit of confusion i think for some players in terms of like what do i prioritize how do i make sure that i get both my chain lightnings off while i have my primary wave buff going i also want to be pressing my fire nova or my uh uh, frost shock or I need to be tracking my legacy of the frost witch buff did I proc it with my lightning bolts and now my chain lightning so there's, there's a lot of things going on with the tier set bonus in regards to how chain lightning kind of fits into the build so I want to make sure we touch on that as well and then each of the builds is going to get a total score and we're going to see which build I think is the best one based on this criteria remember guys it's not just about damage so that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be jumping into these four different builds for you guys, and I'm going to be assessing them based on this criteria. How much damage do they deal? How easy are they to execute? How is the resource generation looking? And then how does it fit into our tier set bonus? We're going to look at each of these builds, and we're going to look at the merits. And remember, this is a guide primarily for Mythic Plus. This is, has nothing to do with raid. This is just going to be in Mythic Plus and how much damage we can deal and how easy it is to execute these builds in a mythic plus environment okay guys i'm really excited to do this series i'm gonna start uh the, the video on the next on the first build 
tomorrow. So each day, we're going to go through them. The next four days, we should have all these different builds covered, and we can uh, sort of get a good picture of where they're at at the end of those four days. So I hope you come along with me on this little journey, this little mini-series that I'm doing, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, let's start a conversation about this and what you guys think about the different builds that I've kind of cooked up here. I would love to hear from you in those comments down below below thank you guys so much again for watching buckle up for this series i can't wait to see you in the next one see you then